Well, this is going to be a fun video to make. Now, as many of you know, normally I like to try and keep my topics very lighthearted and silly to just dive into the gaming news stories that to me are the most interesting or fun. But today, I actually want to do something that's a little bit more business focused to actually analyze the numbers and see what is really killing GameStop. Because when you really just sort of think about it, it seems impossible for GameStop to fail. They're actually the world's biggest video game distributor. They sell more boxed copies of video games than anybody else on the planet, and yet, despite this, they manage to get lower and lower profits, and it seems like within the next few months, they're going completely out of business. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today, what I want to do is count down the three real reasons that GameStop is completely doomed. Now, first and foremost, we need to talk about the digital gaming revolution. This is a term that's thrown around a lot, but I feel like a lot of people don't actually understand it. When you think about video games, a lot of us like to sort of picture the, the olden years. Like, this is obviously, this is one of the first cartridge games ever produced. It's Final Fantasy on the Famicom. There's, of course, things like Super Nintendo games that are super, super great, which used to come in fancy cardboard boxes. But around this time period, the early ages, this is when the internet really started to become big. Obviously, if you're trying to buy something on the PSP or the PlayStation Vita, at any time, you could start to purchase games directly through your console or by going to a store. But there was actually still a caveat to this. During this era, the early 2000s, while there was digital games, it still was not quite ubiquitous. Only certain things were actually provided as digital sales. For the most part, you still had to visit a store because it was mandatory to actually buy a physical disc. This all changed with the launch of the newest console's generation. When the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 actually hit store shelves, everything shifted dramatically. Because a lot of these games distributors, a lot of the people who are actually publishing games, realized that they could make more profit if they did not sell you a disc. If they didn't actually have to ship anything to a store, if they didn't actually have to hand you anything, their profit would be higher. And this is when things really Really, really started to change. The digital distribution was not just beneficial to the people themselves, the people who are creating games, but additionally, it provided an additional outlet. It made it where a lot of times these companies started trying to experiment with only selling digital games at a lower cost. You'll actually notice that there are a lot of games now that if you don't pre-order it, you can't get a copy. You can only buy it through digital storefronts. And this dramatically hurt games stop because now they were selling consoles that theoretically could basically just lead to the death of their own company. They could give you a PlayStation 4 and you would never ever return to the shop because every bit of the content you'd ever be experiencing was actually achieved through the console itself. This led to GameStop severely starting to panic because they noticed that physical game sales were going down, but additionally, trade-ins were going down. A huge thing that actually keeps GameStop in business is you selling them stuff. Going in there and just saying, hey, how much will you give me for this copy of Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess on Wii U? You actually selling them your merch is a huge part of their profit margin because while they're giving you $3, they're turning around and selling it for $30. Now this really started to dwindle because if less people are buying physical games, there's less physical games to turn in. There's also the problem that a lot of companies started experimenting with huge day one patches and stuff, so purchasing a disc seemed less and less relevant. This is a true story. I actually own the original Destiny. I bought Destiny for $2.00 from a GameStop, and the reason this was $2 is because, quite honestly, there's nothing on this disc. By the time I purchased it, there were so many expansions, so many reworks that putting this in my console installed like a 74 gigabyte patch. The disc is nothing except a install button at that point, and GameStop realized that it's very difficult to sell a box when the game is not this. If you're installing this game, it's not really what's even appearing on this art anymore. 
It's here when GameStop really started to branch out. They realized, okay, if people aren't going to be purchasing things directly from us, we need to try and actually experiment. We need to try and find other excuses for people to come into our stores. And this leads to reason number two that GameStop is very, very screwed, which is debt. So this is a fun fact. Until 10 years ago, GameStop actually had zero debt. They would save up enough money to purchase each of their stores. So they would actually buy a real storefront and then use it directly. They basically did this to make sure they owed absolutely nobody money, which meant every bit of uh, sales they made was pure profit. If you're not in debt, everything you're doing is just pure success, which obviously kept the investors very, very happy. But over time, time, they started experimenting by actually purchasing things and getting themselves into debt. Things like Cricket Wireless. Yes, that's right. For a while there, they were actually trying to test the waters of becoming a GameStop cell phone company, and this was a huge loss. But instead of admitting that they'd failed, they started trying to take out bigger loans to purchase even more AT&T wireless stores. This was basically their way of trying to get thousands and thousands of extra shops opening, which ended up leading to even bigger debt. Now, if you ever start a company, let me tell you, begin with zero debt. Now, I'm being dead serious about this. I have no debt. I've never had debt. I've never had a credit card. I've never taken out a loan. I never went to college, so I don't have any college debt. Even my teeth. So my teeth are actually fake. I paid for these with insurance and in cash. I did not take out a loan to even fix my own freaking face. Because I know that as soon as you start getting into debt, it is a hell of a battle to get out of it. Climbing out of that hole is incredibly difficult. And GameStop very much started to get themselves in the pit of selling games purely to try and get themselves out of their own problems. And still, they could not admit defeat. GameStop, for all the things they've done right in the past, is somebody that is very, very stubborn. They're not able to actually admit that they screwed up and then just try and course correct. In my opinion though, the biggest reason that GameStop is absolutely doomed and number three on our list is just because of online sales. The fact that we can buy anything on the internet now. I mean, so I was in the book business for a long time and we would actually have secret meetings where we would go in the back of the bookstore and look at numbers and just see everything beginning to decline. And we really had to just talk to each other in whispers about the fact that we were being replaced by Amazon.com. They were able to sell books faster than us, better than us, they were never out of stock, and a lot of times they were even cheaper. We could not compete with that. Additionally, I think we need to acknowledge the fact that everybody's working more. I mean, I work like 60, 80 hours a week. I don't have time to go to GameStop. I mean, if we're being honest, you can see that my hair is super long right now. I don't even have time to get a freaking haircut. So the fact that everybody's working more means that people have less hours to visit stores and windows shop and think about what they want to buy. We're all much more instantaneous consumers. You want to be able to just get an item, put it in your digital shopping cart, and click buy now. Especially because a lot of digital storefronts now actually allow you to pre-order stuff. If I'm excited about an upcoming game, I can actually pre-order it on a website, pay right there, and then just forget about it. And then the day it comes out, it just shows up in my mailbox. I don't have to worry about driving to a store. I don't have to go to a midnight release. I mean, it's just one of those things where it feels like it's just magic. It appears and everybody wins. Right now, every single store in the world is actually dealing with this. Best Buy, big giant electronics stores. I mean, everybody's kind of dealing with the fact that digital is sort of faster. These digital stores. Websites provide what physical stores can't. I mean, just kind of putting it into context, a friend of mine right now is staying on my couch. She is working four separate jobs. So that's somebody who is never, ever going to set foot in a GameStop because they simply do not have enough waking hours to shop. GameStop is screwed for a variety of reasons, but I definitely think it's these three things that are the most crucial to their downfall.
I'm not exactly happy about it. I have had people in the past say, stop celebrating the death of GameStop, which I actually think is a fair criticism. I don't mean to sound happy in these videos. I think it's just interesting to watch such a massive, multi-billion dollar company go from the top of the top to the lowest of the low. Now, at this point, I think that the only way they can possibly survive is if they try and become their own version of Amazon. If they just start scaling back, become a digital storefront only and just sell stuff through websites. Having physical stores, brick and mortar, to the scale they currently have is just not viable. If they try and reduce, I think that they might survive, but it's going to take some very, very drastic measures. I think we'll know very soon, and honestly, I do think that they're probably going to be completely out of business here in the next few months. When that finally happens, I actually want to do a video where I am planning on uh, the day that GameStop closes, I want to go to uh, like the last local GameStop and just try and buy maybe a couple hundred dollars of stuff off their shelves to, to basically go to a going out of business sale and buy everything I can just to get a good deal and honestly to say one final goodbye to GameStop themselves. But what do you think? Do you believe that all of this is real? Or do you think that it's just a possibility that GameStop may find a way to perpetually exist in some capacity? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. Ooh, man. I, I, I'm uh, melting a little bit. I, all right, I'm going to go get a haircut. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.